Hello and welcome back to another Script Case by Jamie episode. And today we will be continuing with our project. So let's not waste any time. Let's dive in, shall we, and make a start. First of all, download the project files from the members knowledge base. And then, of course, import it and then start to make some changes onto it. And then start to make some changes to it. And of course, many improvements. So without further ado, let's dive in and start creating. Okay, so I'm logged in now with Dan's account. Hello, Dan, and thank you for letting me use your membership account. Now, I had recently heard that, well, somebody mentioned in an email a few days ago that they could not access the project files. So I'm going to go through it now and make sure you can all find them and at the same time update you a little bit. So this is the interface all members receive from the Script Case by Jamie membership. And from here, you can access your account information, change your password, access any or create tasks or projects if you like, or if there are any tasks or projects that we are together working on, you will have access to them there, as well as invoices and estimations. Now, in general, the whole purpose of the membership, of course, is that you gain access here to the knowledge base. And that is the most important factor. Everything else is a side factor. Pay no attention to it unless that is something that you are wanting. OK, so within the knowledge base, we as a member have access to my personal knowledge base, which is, you know, has a lot of information in there. It's personal stuff. It's, you know, all sorts of things. You'll find setup guides and manuals in there for operating systems, as well as some cooking instructions and things like that, recipes and so forth. But Yes, there's a lot of content in there. And of course, because it's my personal KB, it will be something I will be continuing to add to. OK, I still have a lot there. I've just been filtering information back from my old hard drives and that will soon come. OK, so within here, you also then have access to the PHP knowledge base, the free JavaScript knowledge base and the free MySQL knowledge base. And of course, you can access each free, each of those directly from your membership interface. So you don't have to go to any other pages. And then within the script case knowledge base, and if you access this, you can then access all of the information that I have included within the script case KB. Now, there is a ton of information in here. There are a load of snippets. There is a ton of code. Now, if you've never used script case before or if you are interested in using it, this will be a gold mine to you. It will save you hours of work and much more. OK, to start off with our channel project, of course, we have that here within the SC by Jamie channel templates section. And here I can access the projects page. And then within the projects page, we have here our first project. So that is, of course, then the client and customer management platform. So if I click on that, it will then open that relevant page and you can access the project files just by clicking the links that I have recently just added to these titles. They were previously added here with the Google Drive or whatever drive that is. And of course, that well, they were not being displayed to users for some reason. So I do apologize for that. And of course, on the delay, I understood they were meant to be there. And within the documentation, they were meant to be there for you, but they're not. So I've just added these links for you and you can access and download them from there. So what I will do is I will go ahead and click here the SC by J project dash one zip. And this is for the project files which have been updated. So this is the original project here. And if I download then here the latest project files, let's have a quick look at that. And I may also want to also download here the first one. And the reason why I'm going to also download the first file, and there we have both of those, is because in the first file, we also have the database. OK, and as you might be aware, if you have been watching the previous videos, you will know that this is a freshly 
installed. I say freshly, it's, it's a few days old now already, and I have already installed a load of applications. But in general, it is a clean installation of Windows still. I haven't gone crazy installing multiple versions of anything. I have not set up any databases yet. I haven't done anything. I have barely recovered half of my data. And for that, of course, we are going to start this project from the beginning. So what I need to do then is I need to open up my WAMP server so that I can access my PHP, my admin. And if you do not know how to do that, or if you don't have no PHP, my admin, or if you are using a different database, maybe, or whatever that may be, well, they just open that up. And of course, you can go ahead and manually add the database that is required for this project and that is here project underscore one dot sql so i could go ahead and open that and i could open it with let's open it with notepad for the time being because there are now all all i need to do is just copy all of that and i can then come back here to my php my admin and i want to create here a new database and i will call it project underscore one and click, well, in fact, I want to change here the type. And then I can just click the create button. And that will go ahead and create my initial database. I have no tables, no data, nothing. It's just a title. But then I can come here to SQL, and then I can paste the SQL insert code that I have just copied from the .sql file, paste that in there. If I leave enable foreign key checks checked, then it will make sure everything is in order, that all the foreign keys are in order, that they relate to each other, okay? Now, I could uncheck this, and generally it may be a good idea to do so when you are initially adding some tables. In this case, everything should be good. It should not come up with any errors. So I'll just click on the go button. And as we see, everything has been inserted, no errors, no issues, everything has been good. And if I come here now to structure, we can now see our database tables that we have for this project. And of course, they also include the relevant data that had been stored there previously. Okay, so all of that is there, all of our sample data, and then we can already start to work with that within script case to create a new project, or of course, import our current project, which is what we are now going to start doing. Okay, so back within the script case environment, I need to log in first of all. And once I am logged in, I can then of course go ahead and start to import this project. Now my script case is a little slow here and of course the reason for that is, is because you may notice here I have no port numbers. This is actually using the WAMP environment. So I think maybe it gives you as a user also a good idea of you know, the differences, because at some point I will use also the default installation. And then once I have the server set up, I will also use the server environment. And you will for sure get a nice feel of the differences between the different environments on which you have script case installed. Okay, so with our project in hand, we have that here in our documents drive and in our download sorry and here we then have our update so if i just go ahead and update open that up we can see that that is just here our project backup okay so i want to come out of that and then here in script case i can come here to project and import project and there i can then choose the file that i want to import so i'll come here to my downloads and then choose here the project update okay so this is the latest version that's the one i now want to open up not the original one which includes also the database that will fail okay so if i now go ahead and try and import project one it will fail and the simple reason for that is is because the project is inside of this zip file and it then also includes the sql file the update does not it only includes the backup so the update you can import directly so selecting this i can go open and it will then open the project on the original project it will fail because you need to extract 
the project first. Okay, so now that I have the project imported, I can go open project. And because of course it's a small project, there's only one or two applications there, it imports pretty damn quickly. And now we can see that we have imported our applications. We have here the blank and the menu, as well as the various administration applications that we had created. And if instead of going via each folder, I can come here to all applications and I can see them all in one list and see that they are all also outdated. So I first need to generate my applications so that I can start to work with them. So let's go ahead and generate the source code. And what's more than likely going to happen is it's going to give us a load of error messages. And thankfully, it doesn't. And why is that? Because the database that I have just imported was exported also on WAMP. I used WAMP at that time. I had used the same username and password for the database. The connection was the same. So in this case, there would be no errors. Now, if you imported the database into a, separate, a different type of database, maybe you converted it from MySQL to MSSQL or some alternative, or maybe you have a username and password on your connection. And in that case, you will need to, first of all, adjust the connection. And what I would suggest is, instead of editing the connection, so instead of coming here to database and then edit connection, and then you would be then presented your database connection as we have here. So this is the current connection. And if I access that, I can see it is using the same details as my previous setup. Okay, so this is why I have no errors now. Otherwise, generally, you may receive error messages when you go to generate all of those applications and you have not configured the database of that setup. Okay, so in this case, if I need to recreate the connection, I would come here to database, I would go new connection, I would choose the type of database I want to use, in this case, again, MySQL, the same username, the same password, I would then have to list the databases and then choose the database to which I want to associate this to. And doing that, I would then save that, and that would create now a con underscore MySQL1. Now, it is very important to note that all of your applications are configured for con underscore MySQL. So let's have a quick look at that, shall we? If I open, for instance, a form and a grid application, we can come here to SQL, and here we can see the connection that has been applied to this application. And in forms, it is the same if I come here to forms, SQL, and I have here the connection. And this is pretty much identical throughout the other applications within the script case environment. So here, I would then need to change the connection for each of my applications because I have now added a new connection with new connection data, variables, passwords, usernames, whatever it may be, it is a new connection. I need to now associate my applications with that new connection. And it's important to note that it's not only here within the SQL settings. If, for instance, you have a field and that field has a select set up, it would have also had the connection set. OK, so you would have to change that connection in multiple fields or multiple areas. Now, script case does make that very easy for you because we have up here within the application menu option, the express edit. So in express edit, I could choose all applications or select individual applications by choosing whichever I wanted to there and then choosing the options that I want to change within these applications or within all of the applications or the selected applications. So in this case, we want to change the connection, for instance. So here I could choose the connection and I would also want to adjust the connection for the fields. So here I would select both of those or all, or how, however you like, if you want to enable debug mode or distinguish between uppercase and lowercase or even some of the other options that you can quickly change. 
for all selected applications. And there I would just go next. And now here I could choose the new connection for all of my applications and click apply. And then ideally you would then also delete the previous connection, leaving only the one connection that you are using. Now, that is all down to choice. And of course, I could go ahead and apply that now, but I'm going to stick with the original connection because it is all working beautifully. I really have no need to be changing now to connection MySQL 1. No need whatsoever. OK, so we can leave that as it is and we can actually just exit out of this by coming home. And the connections, well, let's also delete the connection one because this connection will not be used within this project. Now we can set up and configure multiple connections to the database and we can then pre-configure or even dynamically configure the database connection for our applications, as well as our selects and so forth, by including multiple connections here. But that is, of course, a completely different topic. And we want to continue on with our project, of course. So let's have a quick look at where we were. Let's click the Run button. And of course, with Run, it will then open up our initial applications we have here our client's grid where we were able to send email. So from here, we had a template structure applied. So here I could choose a template or an email type and then select a template that is associated. So here we have welcome emails and then welcome to script case by Jamie. And then that would auto fill in the email fields. Okay, now we will of course for sure have some issues along the line and that is of course something that we would need to debug but not today today we're just having a look at what we created and of course preparing it for our continuation so with our email template that was quite a nice feature but Moving on, we will want to make quite a few changes to this grid. And on top of that, it is important for some of those larger platforms to have a help system integrated into your platform. So that is also something we will be looking at as we continue on within this project, because we will want our users to feel comfortable with what they are seeing right now, the functionalities that are available to them, as well as, of course, their restrictions and so forth. Now, continuing on, we were also able to make adjustments. We had the form for our users. We had an active button here. that didn't really do nothing yet. And we see it doesn't notify us of anything either. So that is also something that we will want to tackle as before we move on to the next applications. From here, we were also able to send an email directly to this user we were currently using. So that was quite a nice feature. We may want to make some changes to the theme and so forth as we move on. Of course, right now, it's just the framework of our end product, okay? So while you are working in script case, it is important to note that you have those templating and theming features and functionalities because by using those, you can change all of the applications in one go. So instead of concentrating on the design and the layout of what your applications should look like at the end, worry about that at the end, okay? Get all your functionality in place, your buttons where you want them. Semi-views is enough. So for instance, here we have a semi-view. We need to maybe change the button. Our form fields, they look okay, but maybe we would want to have them larger, a different color maybe. We can deal with all of that later on during the theming stage of the project. For now, we want to concentrate on the functionality and information that is available here. So that is why we will be adding the help system in here. So we can add also a help button here. So users know what they are viewing and how they can use that if need be, as well as make changes here to notifications. So when we click something such as here, the active button, it pops up with a window and tells us, hey, 
this is what we're doing. Okay, so this is very good for users, of course, and that is something that we want to also apply here. Now, we have then also here our company grid, and we had here the list of clients that were associated, and we had this grouped and so forth. We may want to make some adjustments to this later on, but for now, let's see. We have then also our email log. Of course, we have no email sent yet. So what we may want to do is actually set this up properly and give that email sending functionality a good testing. Give that email form we had created a good test and make sure everything works. And at the same time, maybe we would also want to style those emails that we are sending a little better. We have our email templates here, and this is pretty much complete, of course. We could just make some adjustments here to the titles, maybe the view, and of course, maybe even add some functionality here so we can disable or deactivate the theme directly here from the grid. But that is, again, something that we can look at before we continue on with further development of the project. We have then here also the email settings, straightforward, just the email from address. And of course, we may want to add further settings in here so that we can use the email sending functionality directly from the database instead of having that configured within the form. But that is, of course, everything we will be looking at within the upcoming videos. So be sure to check this out in next week's session where we will be coming back to this project, not only making some of those adjustments, but we will also be looking at what is next for this platform. Of course, some of those features such as the help may take a little time. I don't think we will... Uh, sketch everything out in a way because it doesn't have to be complete it has to more or less give you the idea of how you can use it okay and that is the purpose of these videos so you can also see what is possible use your imagination a little as to what you can also create because script case really is a super powerful environment it makes it very easy to create basic applications. And from there, you can make it as complex as you like, okay? Because you have all of those features there, a lot of those complexities that you would typically add are already added for you. For instance, you have all of the export functionality that is built in. The searching and sorting and arrangement is all built in. Again, the theming and templating of your platform that you can deal with later. The buttons, who cares what they look like? Who cares what the grid looks like? Right now, functionality, processes data okay and then as we move on to the final stages of the project then we will start looking at actually adding some nice headers in there as well as some nice buttons making adjustments to those the menu and much more but one step at a time, okay? So for today, I think that is pretty much it. We have, what, 20 odd minutes already. Don't want to take up all of your time. Of course, I am sure you would probably be happy to watch these videos all day long. And if that is the case, then of course, do so. Rewatch, comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know that you're liking this. If you're not, then you, it's a bit bleak, right? You're not saying anything. You don't comment. You don't like. <laughs> then, well, maybe I don't like either and I'll just stop making these videos for you guys. But, well, who knows? But for now, I'm having fun still and that is, of course, partially the purpose of why I had started creating the videos for Scriptcase, okay? Because Scriptcase is an amazing environment. It is fun to develop in and you can create some amazingly crazy applications which can process data for you left, right and center. OK, not only that, you have everything at your fingertips. And if not, you can always create it yourself. So that is it for this week, I'm afraid. 
Keep on watching, of course, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, let me know that you are liking these videos. What sort of thing are you interested in having in this project? Why not let me know? Is there something that you want me to add into this while we are within these areas? Is there something that you want to see? Let me know. I may just add it into this project for you. I do have it all planned out already, but I'm happy to make adjustments. So for now, ta-da, have an amazing day, take care of yourselves, and until the next video.